previously on Balls. Finally, Hashim Amla likely to step down as SA's limited overs vice captain after declining a request to lead the side in the recent ODI series against New Zealand. Yeah, and uh, we'd like to get uh, Dolphins coach Zulu Kuzner's thoughts on that. Zulu, thanks so much for joining us at, at short notice. We know you've got to get to a parent-teacher's meeting. Um, yeah, is there trouble at school? <laughs> I hope not. We'll find out shortly, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no. H- how many kids do you have? I've got uh, three. Three kids? Boys and a little girl, yeah. Okay, are you, okay, all right. Well, good luck. I know my parents hated going to parents-teacher's meeting. They found it incredibly boring. Yeah, I don't know how I got landed with a job, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'll just pick you up on, on the back of Johnny's uh, last story over there. Hashim Amla likely to step down as, as South Africa's limited overs vice captain. We know that he didn't like the captaincy role. Um, and mm. I guess as, as a vice captain, if you're not prepared to lead when, when the captain's away, then what's the point? Yeah, fair shot. Uh, I guess I, I think I was a little disappointed myself that... Uh, that. But I, I guess he's got his own uh, he's got his own reasons. Maybe he just wants to concentrate on um, putting runs on the board and just doing you know what he does best. So um, yeah, I, yeah, I think spot on. If, if you're not prepared to, to take it on, if when the, when the captain is uh, can't do it, then um, yeah, I, I guess it's probably best to to uh, groom somebody else. Who would you like to see replace him? Should he step down? I don't know. Um, <laughs> well, that's I honest. I think that I feel like that guy, whoever it is, they need to, you know, hold down his place. Sort of needs to be a regular. Needs to be somebody who is not really under pressure to to have to, you know, score runs to or, or take wickets for that matter um, to hold his place down. So, no, uh, I'm not sure. It's not really really make a call, but uh, I guess it's somebody that um, you know not under pressure in any way. And, yeah, the, the first um, the first name that jumps into my head is, is someone like Faf Duplessis. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that that he's incredibly calm under pressure. He always looks calm. Um, I think, he, geez, I think he could captain the side. Yeah, he has done a bad job. Um, I, I think once you know when he's in when he's, he has been in charge, uh, he probably just needs to to learn a few things. So yeah, not a bad shot. Um, mm. I'm, I'm sure he'd be all right. Yes, Johnny? Yeah, I was just about to ask you, were you quite surprised uh, to hear of Shane Warne calling on uh, Mickey Arthur to be replaced by New Zealand Stephen Fleming, Zulu? Um, look, I know Fleming, I know he spent uh, quite a bit of time in, in the RPL, so he's been doing the hard yards in terms of getting experience. Um, but again, um, haven't really had my finger too much on the pulse as to what's mm. gone, gone on down there. Um, so it's hard to make a call. But no, Fleming's done a good job with... Um, I think he's with uh, with Chennai, yeah. Um, and um, so, so yeah, he is a young coach, and you know, I think coaching is probably going that young route. Uh, what sparked um, those calls? Um, you know, I can't comment. Yes, I don't know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, we've got a we've got a big series coming up against Pakistan. The first test uh, starting this weekend, um, and mm. Graham Smith. It's his ninety ninth one on Friday and uh, you know he should reach his 100th in the series uh, yeah. you know what is what has given him such longevity as a captain um, probably the way he's batted you know I think he's I mean at the end of the day you still need to do do the job with um, with whatever you you know you selected to do and he's been outstanding I mean his, his batting form has been outstanding and again he's commanded the respect of of everybody else through that um so, so yeah. I mean, as I said earlier, the captain or the vice captain still needs to do a job with with um, with either bat or ball. And, and and for me, that's what he's done. And and through that, he's commanded the respect, and you know, he's got the respect around the world, really. Mm. Um, perhaps you could cast your mind back to to a new play. I was reading a uh, I was reading an article on on Sport Twenty Four with former captains commenting and talking about you know what what Graham's meant to the game and what what he's meant to South African cricket but the one thing that they all seem to say um is that the support structures that are in place at the moment are far far better than when they were there and we're talking about you know Kepler Vessel Sean Pollock um you know the, they they mentioned that that's the one big thing that they think must must help these guys uh yeah for sure and I think um you know Gary Kirsten and his support staff need to be commended for that um I think um, you know he's learned well from from being with um, with the Indian team, and certainly is extremely successful with them. So, 
yeah, uh, Captain does. He does need uh, people to lean on. It doesn't always go his way every day, and you know that then it's important for coaching staff and that and that support around him to be strong. So I, I think um, certainly in terms of of, of how Graham's been, you know, been going and. and you know, credit to himself as well for getting good support staff around him because uh, captain needs that. Yeah, and I suppose you know, cr- just credit to him because yeah, as it, it hasn't it hasn't been the smoothest of rides. He sort of had a love hate relationship with with the South African public, and we don't know what it's been like inside the team. But he's copped a fair bit of flack in the media. Yeah, he has. If you captain for that long, you know, you, you're going to cop it at some stage. Yeah. Well. I mean, but um, you know, I think. Uh, you know, all in all, he's been he's been good for us. He's been good for the game. He took over at a, at, a, at a young age. You know, he was hardly you know looking sort of holding his own place down, and and he got landed with the captaincy. And you know, just from those those humble beginnings, really, um, the way he's progressed and where he is now is, is a bloody outstanding job. So, no all credit again to him, and you know, hopefully it goes well, and and he can get a hundred plus Test matches under his. Um, Okay, well, um, give us your prediction. The test side looking very settled, and I'm sure confidence is overflowing there. Not so much, perhaps, with the one day side after uh, the result against New Zealand. But uh, your your thoughts for for the test and, and ODIs? Yeah, I think Pakistan. You never know how they're going to pitch up on the day, and you know, if all eleven of them pitch up and play cricket, it's going to be it's going to be hard fought. Um, I think Gary and and uh, the boys have pretty much got. So there's a lot of focus um, on the on the test arena, so um, maybe playing at home, they'll pretty much have have the Pakistanis um, covered. I would guess maybe maybe two one at worst. Mm. Uh, you know, if I have to make a shot, um, one day is, uh, I think will be a little bit closer. Pakistan have traditionally had a extremely strong and unpredictable uh, one day team. And, and South Africa, I think a little bit of rebuilding, a little bit of finding the right mix, um, how they want to go about um, their one day game. So I, I think again, you know, South Africa are going to put a lot of, a lot of thought into their one day cricket that come under a little bit of fire, um, certainly losing to New Zealand. But I don't want to do that to Pakistan at home. Mm. Okay. Um, speaking of one days, quickly, um, how's, how's coaching life treating you? And uh, you've got a match against the Warriors at uh, at Kingsmead uh, tomorrow. So yeah, uh, obviously you can't win the competition, but you'll obviously go out there to win the game. Yeah, look, we can still finish reasonably high, and um, for us, the focus is we're coming off a really good game in, in Cape Town last week. Uh, a little bit of weather around, so we'll steal the spark plug from the lawnmower and hopefully <laughs> have a good game. Um, yeah, I think. At that stage where we've got two games left in the season, and you know, just if, at the top of my head, if we win that, we, you know, we could finish second, which is a, a damn good achievement from um, years past. So, you know, it might just have to take a little bit of a gamble, but um, yeah, it's going to be game on. Hopefully, leave a little bit of grass on and and just see just see how we go. Thank you, G. Thank yeah, you, thanks, Zulu, and <laughs> thanks. Listen, thanks so much for for giving us some of your time ahead of what is probably starting uh, already. Yeah, <laughs> the teachers' meeting that's probably started. So we'll let you, we'll let you get in there and uh, hopefully no no nasty and unexpected surprises. Yeah, no worries. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Lance. <laughs> Cheers, thanks, Lance. Bye, bye. Cheers. Yes. Here we go, Lance Klusner nice. joining us. This is. Balls Visual Radio. Darren, Simon, Kate and John. Weekdays from 3pm to 6pm Central African Time. Balls.co.za